Hey everyone and welcome back to another walking tour and visit to Titchfield Abbey. The Abbey is located in the village of Titchfield, near the town of Fareham in Hampshire. Join us as we wander a fortified manor that was built on the ruins of a medieval monastery. The turreted gatehouse at the front is the most impressive and it's what draws you into the Abbey. This was built across the front of the Great Hall and renamed Place House. The building stands silently, so beautiful but impressive, for a shell of a roofless ruin. The door itself is stunning, it's huge and a type of lattice woodwork which is really quite iconic to see. The monastery was built in 1237 by the Premonch Detention Order these extensive ruins of the 13th century abbey are dwarfed by an imposing Tudor gatehouse that was built from the nave of the abbey church. Some history surrounding Titchfield started in 1232, when Peter de Roches, who was a powerful bishop of Winchester, founded an abbey for some canons of the Premonstratensian order near the River Meon in southern Hampshire. The abbey was dedicated to St Mary and it grew to possess large estates throughout the south. With a total of 11 manors and over 5,000 acres of land, the location itself of Titchfield made complete sense and made a great place to stop on a journey from London to ports all along the English Channel. And Henry V is known to have stayed at the Abbey on at least one of his military campaigns against France. The Abbey itself was never really large as only 14 to 15 canons actually lived here at the height of the abbey's prosperity, and two of those canons served as priests for nearby parish churches. Following on some years in 1537, it was closed by Henry VIII during the dissolution of the monasteries. It was then passed to the first Earl of Southampton, and the Earl rebuilt the monastic buildings into a sumptuous and grand Tudor mansion that was known as Place House. The west end of the Abbey Church was converted into an impressive gatehouse entrance to the palace that is what Titchfield Abbey is truly known for. Interestingly, the third Earl of Southampton was a patron of William Shakespeare and it's believed that several of Shakespeare's plays were performed at Place House for the first time, quite possibly in a private apartment beside the gatehouse. As time went by, the Earls of Southampton spent more time at other residences and by the late 18th century, Place House was rarely used and the end came in 1781 when the house was torn down and the stone reused for other building projects.
Stone was hard to come by in Hampshire, but the Abbey was built mainly from stone drafted by the Isle of Wight, Dorset and even Caen in France. The buildings at Titchfield Abbey consist of a chapter house, a kitchen, a refectory, library and quarters for the abbot, as well as a cloister at the north of the church. As the Middle Ages progressed, considerable investment was made to upgrade the domestic buildings to meet the ongoing living standards and it's probably by the mid 14th century that they were rather luxurious, as evidenced by the elaborate tiles that are still seen today all over the site. Added with battlements to his new home and turning some of the grand windows into impressive fireplaces with elaborate chimneys that you can see, there was also a small private theater and a deer park. The cloister became the central courtyard of the house and the old refectory with the addition of a grand porch became the great hall whilst the rest of the abbey was turned into fine apartments for the family. There are beautiful and authentic medieval tiles placed just outside the door of the refectory so that the canons would read this before they ate. It's said that the Latin inscription means before you sit down to eat your meal remember the poor. You're able to see these while you walk around the courtyard, although in the bad weather the English heritage have covered them to keep them preserved. But you're also able to see photos of what the tiles look like on the information pickets and online too. We got lucky in our visit as the sand and the sheets had been removed so that visitors could see the different collections that they have here. These tiles had lay hidden beneath the courtyard stone until they were rediscovered in 1923 by the English Heritage and they've said it's one of the best collection of medieval tiles in southern England. It's interesting to spot the different patterns and designs in the tiles and it gives you thought to how they would have looked back in the day. You get a real feel for how life was lived in the Abbey by wandering through it. It's easy to imagine those huge fireplaces roaring with a log fire or warming water for baths. The Abbey itself is impressive, but you won't be here for hours. We spent around half hour here as we visit quite often to the site, because it's just such a nice place to come and relax. What I enjoy about Titchfield is that there are picnic benches and a lovely grassy field that are perfect to enjoy a picnic on. But if you don't fancy that, there's also a local family friendly pub called the Fisherman's Rest, just outside the Abbey that serves hot and cold food and a selection of British ales that would be a nice addition to a visit at Titchfield. You're able to wander Titchfield at your own leisure as it's open daily at all reasonable times, as well as free, which is always a bonus. You could easily tie up a visit to Titchfield with a visit to Netley Abbey not far from here in Southampton. So if you've enjoyed watching and walking along with us, why not hit that like button and click that notification bell so you won't miss a video. If you haven't subscribed, why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much to our Patreons and thank you for watching. Till next time.